Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing traffic engineering series. In the last episode, we started discussion around the constraint and we talked about the very first constraint that was the affinity map. And we looked up some theoretical concept as well as some hands on. We, on that note, we will continue our discussion on journey in this constraint side. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about another very important constraint, which is simply just called as disjointness or sometimes called as disjoint path also. So what is the intent, you know, for somebody to really use this type of constraint? So this type of constraint is pretty interesting when you are working with service provider or even like a large enterprise. Where the whole idea is, let's say, hey, you know, I have a topology. So let, let's go back to quickly to our topology. If you see our topology between this router R1 and this router R10, we have multiple paths. So the router R1 can decide to take the top path going via 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, or it can come via 3, 5, 7, 9, and 10. That means this router 2 has two potential paths. So if I go ahead and create some policies on this router, let's say R1, and if I go ahead and create multiple policies between this router R1 and router R10, if I do not go ahead and configure any constraint, there is a possibility, and you will see that also, that let's say I'm creating two policies between router R1 and router R10. There is a possibility that for both of those policies, the router R1 or our PCE can give us the same path. So when the same path is provided for both the policies, what happens, let's say if there is a problem with that single path, we would experience a little bit of, you know, a downtime. To really avoid that, we can, you know, bring up the concept of this joint path, where as a service provider or as a network operator, you can go ahead and between a single source and destination, we can ask the SRPC to give us two unique paths. So that means we can say, hey, you know, when I'm creating first policy, go ahead and give me a unique path. Let's say the SRPC decides to give you the top path. And when you create a second policy and you will do the same constraint, hey, give me unique path. In that, it will, the SRPC will certainly avoid giving you the same path that was given earlier. And when you are doing this, this just simply called as disjoint path. So the advantage with this disjoint path that means you will have two separate paths between a given source and a destination. And again, you know, we can go ahead and use any of those optimization objective that we have learned, either IGP based, latency based, whatever the your optimization objective that you are looking. And we can go ahead and combine any of those objective with this our disjoint path. So that's the whole idea behind the disjointness or simply the disjoint path. So in SRT, one can compute a path that is disjoined from another path in the same disjoint group. So this disjointness introduces a concept of which is called a disjoint group. So that means when you are configuring more than one policy between a pair of device, you will go ahead and put them into a group. And when you put them into a group with the constraint or disjoint, PC will know, okay, hey, they belong to a same group. That means all the policies that belongs to the same group, I need to make sure I'm not giving the same path for those policies. There are a couple things that plays a role when you work with the disjoint path. We can ask this disjoint based on a couple of the parameter. We can ask that based on link. That means, hey, you know, you can use the same node, but on the same node, do not use the same link for both of my policies. Or you can ask that disjoint based on node. That means do not include the same set of node in the path that are being used by policy. Or we can go ahead and use SRLG also. So for the time being, we will go ahead and focus on link and node. For SRLG, we need to learn one more concept. So after this, we'll talk about that concept and then we'll talk about the SRLG. So the very first thing, uh, we need to go ahead and do it. And let's do, go ahead and create two policies. So we'll go ahead and create two policies between node 1 and your node 10. And then let's examine the path that is being taken by both the policies. And then we will go ahead and introduce our constraint, which is the disjoint path and disjoint group, and then see what happens to our policies. Okay. So with that, just simply go ahead and 
log into router r1 we go under the segment routing traffic engineering we'll go ahead and create a policy let's call it policy one we'll go ahead and use a color value of 10 let's say endpoint ipv4 6.1.10 which is the router r10's loopback address candidate paths preference of let's say 100 150 whatever we want to use i will say dynamic PSAP, we are asking the path, let's say the metric type is uh, IGP. Let's say we want to do that IGP. Go ahead and commit the change. And uh, just let's simply come out here. We'll go ahead and say uh, policy. And we'll go ahead and create another policy. And then the name of the policy is, let's say, policy number two. The color we are using is 20, endpoint IPv4. 6.1.1 again and the candidate paths again 150 probably let's use the same thing uh, candidate paths preference of 150 same dynamic psap the metric type that we are using is again ipp and yeah, let's go ahead and come out. and let's come out if i go ahead and simply do a show segment routing traffic engineering you can see both of our policies that we just configured policy one and policy two, pretty much identical to the same endpoint. Now let's take a look at both of the policies, show segment routing, traffic engineering policy. And let's go ahead and you know look the whole output. You can see both the policies are up at the moment. They are to the same destination. And if you take a look at the type is IGP for both the policies, the metric is also same. And if you take a look at the path for our first policy is going to uh, 16,004, 6 and 10. And if you take a look at this also 4, 6 and 10, that means the router one is taking this top path for both the policies. And as you can see, even though we have a valid and good path from the router one to router 10, but our policy is still taking the same path for both of our policy. And that's where this particular constraint can come handy where it can go ahead and provide two separate paths between same source and destination pair and that will allow really a higher degree of redundancy for our particular configuration so now what we'll do we'll go ahead and edit these two policies and now we'll go ahead and introduce the concept of disjoint path and we'll take a look at that particular constraint so now let's just simply go to configure segment routing traffic engineering and let me just go to our first policy so i'm just going to go ahead and copy paste some of the configuration and if you remember the constraints we are under candidate path and preference in that case we were using 150. now if you take a look at here uh, we have the constraints keyword and under constraint we have again this disjoint path a request disjoint path computation so we'll just simply say hey disjoint path with a disjoint path it says hey give me a group id that you want to assign let's say the group id i want to use it i'm giving it a number 150. with the group id it says hey tell me the type of disjoint that you are interested in the type we have couple we can say hey avoid the same length for both the policies or we can say do not take the same node so in this case if you notice for that both the policies were taking the same node actually so i'll go ahead and use the node keyword uh, for the time being again you can go ahead and experiment with the link that means we are just simply saying do not use the same link for two of my policy but we'll go ahead and do it based on the node here that's all we need to go ahead and do it and let's commit our very first policy i have just made a change to the very first policy now with this change now let's take a look at what happened to our policy so if i go ahead and do show segment routing traffic we have just put our only very first policy into the constraint but for second policy we have not specified any constraint now if we go ahead and take a look at the policies again and at the moment if you see here the very first policy there is literally no change and if you continue to see there's the same so they both are primarily still using the same path because we have not moved the second policy into our disjoint group yet so now let's go ahead and fix that for our second policy 
So now we'll go ahead and make a change to the second policy. So I'll do configure. And just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and copy paste some of the things. Uh, my bad segment routing traffic engineering and let's just simply paste here and you can just simply go ahead and even copy paste so we'll say constraint again and the disjoint path the group id is 150 and the type is node and let's go ahead and commit the chain and if i come out here and take a look at the policies that we just configured and if you see for both the policies they both belongs to the same disjoint group where the group id is 150 and we are doing a disjoint based on the node and now let's take a look at the status of our policies show segment routing traffic engineering policy and let's go ahead and scroll down now if you take a look at the for very first policy it is going via three four and then it is making use of the adjacency set from there it is going to nine and then ten and if you take a look at our second policy, it's going via 2, 5, and there it is making use of a adjacency SID, and from there it's going to 8 and 10. Now, as you can see, for both the policies, it is using two different paths, and those two different paths are based on the disjoint constraint, and in the disjoint constraint, we are avoiding the, simply the nodes actually, okay? And if we had set link, then it could use the same node, but it will not use the same link for the set of the policies, which belongs to the same disjoint group. And again, this disjoint group, this particular constraint is again pretty important. And it really gives you a redundancy during your configuration when you are configuring the policy. That way you are ensuring, okay, if even one of the path has a fluctuation or anything, your policies are not impacted in any way and you achieve a little higher degree of a redundancy that's what we call and for that we are using the constraint and the type of the constraint that is being used is disjoint and with that we looked up a group id and it needs to be same for all the policy that needs to belong to the same disjoint group and in that case the constraint is simply node where we are trying to avoid a node we can go ahead and give a link also majority of the time you would see for these kind of policy link is the one that makes sense or the srlg that we'll go ahead and read a little later but you can also go ahead and you know, provide the node if you we do not have that many number of policies so that will be all for this episode in the next episode we will go ahead and talk about another important concept before we can go ahead and explore the another constraint and that will be the last constraint that is srlg but before that we need to understand another concept so that'll be for the next episode so i will see you guys in the next episode thank you